We commonly get a lot of questions about the gear and tools that we use on the channel. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the Harbor Freight products that you should check out if you work on your Jeep or just any vehicle in general. If you guys are anything like me and you sit when you're working on certain projects with the Jeep or any off-road vehicle, you know that having a nice stool or mechanic stool really does pay off in the long run. Harbor Freight actually just came out with it. It's their Icon series, which is their highest level of tool quality. And we decided to pick this one up in black. Now there was a couple lower end stools that you could purchase there that came with some thinner foam and honestly didn't look like they would hold up that well. We ultimately went with this one based on how quality it was. We compared it to the Snap-on price, which was like five times what this is and let's be honest we are kind of shade tree mechanics or backyard mechanics and we've been doing this for a while but we do not regularly put this through every single day of its paces this seems extremely durable though and i can tell you if you did own a shop i'd imagine this holds up pretty well i believe it comes in black red blue or green it is adjustable so when you sit down on it it lowers down it's got two magnetic trays down below and five of these really kind of off-road style casters. It all comes pre-assembled too. The only thing that we had to do was install the strut down here and I'm very happy with how comfortable it is as well as the fact that I have the ability to go up and down in it. So definitely if you guys are wrenching out in the garage, if you even work with smaller tools, woodworking, metalwork, whatever you're doing, check out this chair. I'm really happy with it so far. And uh, there it is, the Icon brand new mechanic stool. I think this is a great bargain if you're kind of a mechanic that is not doing this full time, but still puts some pretty good use and abuse onto your tools. I've got kind of a wide variety of some of the ratchets and torque wrenches that I have personally purchased from Harbor Freight. And I gotta say, when they released that Icon lineup, it was really, really competitive with all of the snap-on ratchets that I did own. Now, looking at this, the nice thing about it is you're only gonna be paying $40, $50 for a ratchet compared to the snap-on where it's about $200. You still get a crazy good warranty with these and I haven't been able to bust any of them yet If you guys set these next to snap on you can tell that it looks very similar to what they offer Including those trays where we house our extensions and then also our adapter sockets You really can't beat the price when you get everything built into these and they have a lot more options now I think Harbor Freight recently has been getting a lot more and a lot better kind of guys on the back end That are really looking into what the mechanic at the home level is doing and what kind of quality they use I've heard of guys using these for their full-time mechanics jobs and they hold up very well And then recently I picked up the torque wrenches I've had very good luck with those and I was considering going with the snap-on or matco But for the price I just couldn't justify it now You guys can disagree with me in the comments if you think everyone should own a snap-on $800 half-inch torque wrench or for the half a dozen to dozen times that I use it during the year These icon torque wrenches which actually come with two certificates of approval will work perfectly fine for me I use this one for the beadlock wheels and then this one we were just swapping out wheels and tires. I had a need for the half inch just because I was starting to do more and more with wheels and tires, larger things. So I decided to pick that up as well. But those both came in at a very comfortable price, around the $150, $120 mark for two great torque wrenches here. The nice thing too with those extensions and a lot of other of those tools, especially the sockets, as they come with the same trays that basically look exactly like Snap-on, but those are nice for the toolbox and organization. This is just a little bit of what I've got from them. I actually use, which you guys will yell at, that adapter that goes from 3 8 to half inch in there. I have used that on my Milwaukee Impact for probably two years now, and it is holding up tremendously well. There's obviously no wear and tear on it, and it still works the same as day one. There's always a need, especially in our garage, to have a little bit more room to put the mismatched parts, the little pieces that you take off, as well as the tools while you're in the general work area. We found this especially frustrating on the interior when we kept removing parts and then had a few drop down the dash, drop down the seating area. So we're gonna set this into place and hope, ho, 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 boy. That's not good. This new US General grip mat actually goes onto the paint or interior surfaces of your vehicle, sticks on very well, and allows you to store all of your tools and components that you're currently working with. You can see we've been out here wrenching today and we've got some of our sockets here, some of the parts that we've taken off, some nuts and bolts, and then we've got a few other bits that will all fit into this and it doesn't slide around and keeps a very nice area for you to work in. It's actually got some little measuring areas too, so there's a ruler for inches and centimeters down below. But what this does is give you a solid platform and is very durable here as well. You can simply rinse this out if you get it too dirty and it does stick very nice to the painted surfaces. I hold a couple different things in here that I also purchased from Harbor Freight, including some of these little snips here. 
and I like to use these for all of my zip ties as well as just some finer wire. The nice thing with this is it gives a very nice cut edge and will not leave those zip tie ends that kind of stick out, notch out, and really cut you up. I also use these when I installed the under the sun grill insert and it gave a nice clean cut to any of those hex pieces that I had to remove from the grill. Some smaller bits that I pick up there, trim removal tools. These you cannot live without. They're like four bucks, so you really can't go wrong there. Picking these up, and let's be honest, do you need a name brand version of these? They're literally to pull different pieces out of plastic. So those work well. I've got some sockets that I also picked up here. But then again, just setting all of our little smaller tools right in here into this plate. I think I might actually get the bigger one. There's a larger one too as well. This is like 20 bucks. It's bright blue so you can't miss it. And I'm very happy with how this works. One of the last things that I wanted to talk about today was the recovery gear that is located at Harbor Freight. Now, when I talk about recovery gear, I'm also talking about some bags and things to hold that gear as well. If you guys recall our previous video, we talked about everything we purchased in this section, but we now have a pretty good use for it. We've installed some more bits onto the Jeep and you're gonna start to see some more of these components being used. One of the coolest things, and I gotta say, it was one of the cheapest things that we purchased also, was this Badlands winch dampener. So what that does is completely go around the winch line and you can add weight to that so if it does snap especially if you're using steel line which most people don't anymore that is going to drag that completely down and it's not going to fly back and injure yourself anyone standing there or shoot back through a windshield at all so that was a really great buy it is extremely durable all of these sections are reflective and then i think it's it's all velcro yeah all velcro all the way down through there and it's heavy duty this thing feels like it could last a very long time the next thing that we picked up too is our snatch block here this is the apex one this one is rated up to 12 I don't know what it's rated up to. I think it's like 20,000 pounds or something like that. Very durable here, very heavy duty piece of equipment. I checked all through here, there's no burrs or anything. This is a completely brass piece inside here as well. And the nice thing, that'll split out and double the winching power or help us get out of some difficult situations. So this is always good to have in the recovery kit. And we're gonna try it out and see how it holds up. Another piece that we've got here is the Apex kind of pro link style D-ring shackle mount, then this is gonna be meant for the front of the vehicle on a winch. Now this was about 40 or $50, I can't recall. You guys will let me know in the comments. It's rated up to eight tons and it looks to be of pretty high quality. Now what I wanna do is I really wanna put this through its paces and see how it holds up to the kind of abuse that we're gonna put it through. If it doesn't, we will be sure to let you guys know and go back with a factor 55, but I thought for the price point, it would be worth to try out. And if it does fail, well, we'll try and do that in a safer way using all of our other safety standards that we do when we're recovering ourselves. Last thing that we use here is the Bauer storage bag. Now I keep all of our recovery gear in here, including our Bubba rope that we've got tucked in there. Our, we have a shovel in there, and then also there's some nice slots on the side for more tools. But I like to have very specific tool bags for uses. So this is the off-road bag. I know it, it's bright red. It's got a nice durable bottom to it, and I can keep everything in here. It's a large style bag, and for the price point, once again, you can't beat it to throw those tools in and have it tucked into the back of the Jeep. These seem very durable, and I think we're actually gonna pick up one of their, I think they're called uh, like the Pelican case style that they've got for all of our camera and shooting equipment. These hold up really well, though and I've had this in the back of the Jeep for a few months now I'm gonna really try it out this summer and see how it holds up a lot of people ask about the tools and what we're using on the channel on a day-to-day -day basis and these have held up really well for us I think Harbor Freight has a lot of good buys there's also some kind of cheaper things on there that I wouldn't hold my life to but these are some great products that you should probably check out let me know in the comments down below what products you think we should check out next from Harbor Freight and if you've got any specifics that you recommend till next time my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred and I want you to get out there and earn yours